Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Installation. And in today's video, we're gonna be installing a powered subwoofer in this 2022 Hyundai Tucson Hybrid. Now in this install, we're gonna show you how to run all the cables and get a powered loaded low profile subwoofer installed to the factory system. Let's get started. So before we jump into things, being that this is the hybrid, we have to be very strategic in the way that we install this powered subwoofer because it doesn't really have a full-on traditional 12-volt battery system that's easy to tap into up underneath the hood. What we're going to do in today's install is show you how to tap into that 12 volt system so we can run this powered subwoofer. Now our Tucson also does not have the factory upgraded Bose or amplified sound system so we don't need to be worrying about that so much. But in today's install, this low profile subwoofer can either be installed in the trunk area or up underneath the front seats depending on the size of the powered sub. All right, so here we're at the bench. Now the parts that we're using for install, like we said before, we're using this low profile amp sub combo it's all in one which is super nice it's a 10 inch it does claim 600 watts rms but based on the 25 amp fuse that's on the side of it we're looking at about a 300 watt rms and that's at 100 percent efficiency so maybe a little bit of less than that i would say between 100 and 150 watt rms is what we're truly looking at at the output of this 10 inch powered sub now to wire this up, it does require an eight gauge wiring kit. We'll link a wiring kit down in the description. Essentially a wiring kit will come with power wire, ground wire, RCA, speaker wire, remote terminal wire, fuse, and all the little accessories with it. Uh, today we're gonna be using a little bit of bulk wire of our eight gauge, uh, but uh, like I said, we'll link a wiring kit down in the description for you so you'll have everything that you need. So at this point of time, what we need to do is head underneath the hood. We're gonna start running our power wire from the power distribution area because again, there's no traditional 12 volt battery underneath the hood because we have the hybrid. If you have the gas only version, you should have that 12 volt battery there. But again, we don't. So we're gonna to go to the power distribution and we're gonna run this power to the passenger under front seat area. Now here we are up underneath the hood. Now traditionally, if you did not have the hybrid version, um, you're gonna have the 12 volt battery up here, generally in this area. Now, because we have the hybrid, we don't have that here. And a lot of individuals have said that the 12 volt system is really heavily now integrated with the hybrid battery. So it's not just a super easy, simple install, um, especially since that 12 volt battery is nowhere to be found underneath the hood. So instead we have this power, power distribution area. So if we take this on off, we have a place here where we can tap into that 12 volt system. This post here is a good safe place for us to add our eight gauge power wire to. Now, uh, mind you, if the vehicle does go dead, not the hybrid battery but the 12 volt battery the manufacturer actually recommends this is your positive post technically for that 12 volt battery this is where you'd add your jumper cables to uh, to jump start the vehicle believe it or not so we're going to go as close to that jump start location as possible and we're going to choose this positive stud as our location for our powered amplified subwoofer so that's going to be it. We're going to actually put a ring terminal through an inline fuse. We're going to go through the firewall and run cable into the body of the vehicle. So here we are up underneath the steering column. Now we need to pass our power wire through the firewall. There's a couple of different places you can drill or you can use an existing grommet. Now our main wiring harness goes right there through the firewall. And on the outside of the harness, right before it hits the side of the grommet itself, it's a very soft place. And what we've done is we've just poked a hole through it and ran a hanger through it. Now we're being very, very conscientious of that factory wiring where we're actually running that through. We don't want to damage our factory wiring whatsoever. And so we ran that as far off to the left as possible. It's nowhere near that factory wiring loom and it pokes through to the other side. So we're gonna show you where it passes on through. Now here we are, this is where it kind of came out and we're gonna shine a little light in there. And that's where it passes on through inside the firewall there. Um, again, it's totally on the outside. It doesn't impact the factory wire loom whatsoever. 
we got to be very careful of that and this is where it comes out at this point so what we're going to do is tape our wire to it we're going to lube it up with a lot of soap and water so it's very slippery and we'll pull this on through to pull our power wire through that grommet into the cabin of the vehicle Alrighty, so we taped our eight gauge wire to it really well. We're gonna lube this up with soap and water and we're gonna pull it into the cabin of the vehicle from the inside and uh, we'll leave just enough wiring up here underneath the hood so we can run an inline fuse right before we go to that positive post at that distribution block. So let's lube that up and pull it on through. All right, so there's where our wire comes out through the ground mitt. We go under the carpet. Now we'll probably split loom this section just so it's not a big bright wire that's showing up underneath the dash. And then what we did is underneath the carpet here, we went this way underneath the drive-by wire cable, underneath the center console, but over the transmission tunnel. We'll pick up from the other side. Came out this side and we popped the carpet up here. Now, to do that, essentially, it's pretty straightforward. You pop this panel off, it's just held on with clips. We pop this panel off, it's just held on with one clip. And then we pulled the carpet up and we ran our wire up underneath the carpet. There's a hole through the seat brace there, out here, and we came to this point. So this will go to the power and ground of our terminals here so there's our power our ground here that black one goes back as we were up here we noticed there is a hole there that was already tapped so we put a bolt in there that we found that fit we clean up the grounding location with the wire brush there that's what it looks like so it is metal on metal no insulation between the paint and we got our ground completed so out here we have our remote terminal wire and our base knob wire, which we'll need to run next. And also we need to tap into signal from our factory stereo system, which we're just gonna grab speaker signal from the B pillar here. And we'll show you what that looks like in a bit. We can probably go ahead and get our sub mounted. It'll fit great up underneath this location, even underneath this vent. It's nice and flat and it's a perfect spot for that sub. All right, now for our signal, we're using the high level input cable that came with the subwoofer rather than using a line out converter and some RCA. So what we've done is we've prepped our high level uh, harness input that will plug into the um, base amplifier itself. Let's come with the ground. We generally use that if we have a ground loop noise or an issue um, in the sound itself. So we're not gonna hook it up unless we need to. And then the speaker wires, since we're just gonna snag from the passenger B pillar panel, it's a sub, we don't need a left and a right technically. And so we're just gonna go ahead and snag um, signal from one location. So we combine both negatives inputs and then both solids positives and we, we extended it. So we actually soldered those on and put some heat shrink to extend those wires. And we have quite a bit of length here. We're gonna run this to the passenger B pillar area. So we're gonna finish taping this up with some Tessa tape just to protect the wire a little bit more. Go get it installed. Okay, so we've started hooking up our amplifier slash subwoofer combination here. And we, since the seat is all unbolted, we can actually get it fitted in and it's gonna go up underneath in this flat location. So we got our power and ground all hooked up there with our remote turn on wire and our high level input also there. It runs all out. High level input comes to here. We also have our base knob and remote turn on wire. These connections will come next. We have our base knob wire ready to go. So at this point with this ready, the adjustments are all on this side, which is fortunate for us. We can still get to it before we put the seat down. But at this point we can maneuver this in and get it in place. So with our power and ground hooked up on our amplifier, we went ahead and connected our power wire to the distribution area. All we did is put just a small hole here and enough length that this can be moved up and out of the way. And now we can get this mounted and finish mounting our fuse holder. Okay, so we got our power wire connected through that little hole that we made, all split loomed. And we made a nice little fuse holder here. It's nice and sturdy. We use that mounting location to create one. 
and uh, this is nice and short and then this goes split loomed all the way through the firewall as we showed you before so at this point we're done underneath the hood we can go ahead and get it shut all right so we went ahead and got our amplifier slash subwoofer all installed it fits under that vent really nicely it's nice and snug we're not going to tack it down it's not going anywhere especially with that vent on top it's in there pretty tight got everything hooked up on this end got it all zip tied nice and clean and this side we can get to our adjustments as needed so we started zip tying everything else here so this is our high level input and we'll go over our B-pillar in a minute, but this way goes our power wire, base knob wire, and remote turn-on wire. Remote turn-on wire comes up here, and this yellow wire in this pin is an accessory wire, so we just put a T-tap because we don't want to break that wire. Just to tap into that, and uh, we soldered on and got that all good into this connector, and then we use that T-tap. So that's there and installed. So that will trigger our amplifier to turn on when the vehicle is on accessory or run mode because it's a hybrid. So that's all in there nice and clean. And then our base knob wire, we kept running up and over, went back over the transmission tunnel and it's just kind of draping right here. We're gonna mount it on the driver's side. Now we've taken our B pillar off here. It is one, two, three, four. There's two clips on each side. It unsnaps from the upper bezel here as well. And with that up and out of the way, we ran our high level input speaker wire up to here. And we in this harness have a red and a green wire. Red is your positive, green is your negative, And we soldered onto those so we didn't break the wire. We just stripped the shielding back and soldered onto that. Um, you can also use T-taps if you wanted to in this application or some uh, other various wire taps. Uh, we just don't want to cut and break the original line. So we pulled back the, the factory shielding um, over these wires and located those red and green wires. Again, red is positive, green is negative. So we hooked up and soldered onto those. So that'll pull the signal from the factory speaker to provide our amplifier so our sub knows what to play. So we're going to tape those up. We got it all zip tied nice and clean here and uh, we can reinstall this panel. Okay, so we got everything reassembled here. Fits under there super nice and clean. Nobody's gonna kick it. Um, you can still get to the gain and adjustments there if needed. Uh, but other than that, got everything put together. We're gonna go ahead and mount a base knob based on the customer's request on that side. But other than that, we are done. Here it is from the back side. Now this is the seat all the way rolled forward. Um, and uh, when it's in its normal position, you can't even see the subwoofer. It's perfect. Got that all in there. Now again, this is not going to shake the car. This is, we're going to assume about 100-ish watts RMS. So um, for what it is and adding a little base without taking up any space in the vehicle, this is a great solution. And that's about it for this install here today. So if you want to pick some of these parts up we use today, we'll link those down in the description for you uh, for your convenience. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to hit the like button if you like what you saw. And don't forget to subscribe. We post great content on the channel all the time. And we will see you in the next video.